seems just to be annoying. Um, we, we, call, we call these feeds. We call these pipes. And we call these joints. So a pipe is like a Unix pipe. You create pipes, you consume from pipes. It's a very simple metaphor. They, they have names, but they're server-generated names. You say, I want a pipe. Server gives you a URI, as we saw in a RESTful example. You then say, get, which gives you a message. You say, delete, which deletes the pipe. You get a message, message content, so you can access the pipe and what it has. The feed is where you send stuff. So a feed would be for publishing information, for sending requests for pizza, anything. And then you connect the pipes to feeds. It's a very simple metaphor, and it works. And it actually maps onto AMQP in a kind of a nice way. It's not quite one-to-one, -one because in some of the feeds are exchanges, and some actually are queues. And that's where AMQP got it wrong, is that it actually mixes things which have the same basic semantics in two different places. It separates them out. OK. Enough of the lecture on, 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 on that. It gets very detailed. We made an implementation of RESTMS called Zyre. So if you were online, I would say, look at Zyre.com now, but you can't. But I'm sure you will when you go home. Zyre.com has a, so Zyre is the, yeah, the messaging server. It's open source, of course. We began this last year together with RESTMS. And it's basically a proxy for, I'll show you how it works. Typically, you have an MQP network with a big broker in the middle and applications hanging off it all around, doing heavy stuff. And then you have an internet network on the outside, public internet network. You have clients here that want to access something in that network. Zyre sits here. speaks to MQP, and here speaks to HTTP. You know, post, get, delete, put. So basically, you can use Zyre in several ways. You can use it to create a web front-end for an existing AMQP application, which is unlikely to interest anyone here because I doubt any of you do that. More interestingly is just completely ignore this part and just use it as a messaging server and just pretend it doesn't know. Just There's an AMQP engine at the back, not relevant. It's basically a very simple, accessible messaging system which speaks HTTP, that's all. I think, the, again, the, it, it's always to do with the cost. Yeah, the cost of learning AMQP, writing an AMQP application, it's weeks and months. This is a big improvement over previous systems already, which used to be six months to a year. Uh, getting, you know, uh, JMS, reasonably good, still very, very complex. Doesn't do much more, basically. MQP is good, but it's still too complex. So in RESTMS, you pick it up. You should, be, you should be up and running in a few hours. If you're using one of the libraries that we have, less time, a few minutes. And that's really the goal. I mean, the goal is to get this to be really, really accessible, really easy to use, and still deliver the same functionality. We lose a few things here and there. Some things we chop off, not interesting. Maybe they come back later when we actually need them. Um, Zyre is actually built on something called X5, which is a redesign of an old thing that we made years ago called Shitami, which is a web server, a very popular, tough little web server. I once saw on Slashdot a guy who had a Windows 95 machine with 26 hard drives, and he had a, this site running on Slashdot. It was being Slashdotted and running Shitami, and it was just taking it. A very tough 
This was one of our early experiments in multi-threading um, in code. It's now being rewritten to use our new, our new engine. And that's doing the HTTP work for Zyre, in fact. So we'll also make a new web server, which, which as a kind of a side product. Uh, to give you some examples of how big, this is actually about three and a half K lines of code, meta lines of code, if you like. Zyre is about the same. They're tiny in terms of actual code work. The metaprogramming is very, very efficient. So then we were saying, well, that's fine. We have this software. It's still a bit complex to install. We don't yet have nice binary packaging. There's my friend Benjamin who's been working for like six months. Where's Benjamin? He's not there. Yeah. <laughs> to try and get Debian packaging working. It's very difficult. This is all, it's all FUDs work and it takes time and stuff. So we just, we still deliver source code. That's annoying for many people, um, especially on Windows where, you know, with Microsoft compilers, I mean, they're just so bad. So we made a, a live site. This is fun. It's called live desire com. And again, if you had Wi-Fi, you could go and try it right away, but you can't, so just imagine it. Basically, it's a running, it's a running RESTMS server. It's running online, you can access it. It's an open server. You can use it to publish stuff, receive stuff. And I had some demo programs, which you can see if you go to zire.com, you can look at them and try them. And they're, they're, it's a seven-line Perl script, basically. And it, it's, it's doing microblogging. So you publish to a feed with your name and a comment, and you can receive from a, from a feed. And you can basically just do microblogging like that. And it's really, really simple to do. So you're probably asking by now, you know, what's, what's actually different here? You know, what's, what's, you know, we know a lot of stuff. We have RSS, we have Atom Pub. What's, what's different? Now, what am I getting if I try this out? So I'll try some sales. I don't usually do sales. I'm usually a programmer, but OK. I think the biggest thing is that stuff's happening here. Interesting stuff, useful stuff, happening on the server on your behalf. The most interesting is queuing. Now, if you look at RSS, RSS basically says, here's a feed. And then every now and then you, you go and look at your feed again. You pull and you say, where's my feed? And it's very slow. And you can maybe get 10 or 15 or 20 items, and then you know, the, things, things, the things hang. And it's, it's, it's horribly slow. For a little amount of data, it's like, that's incredible. And it's, it's all pulling, so you have to pull, pull, pull. Pull, and you're asking the server, has something changed? Has something changed? Has something changed? You couldn't imagine a less efficient way of, of, of doing messaging. It's the worst possible design. Atom Pub is better. It's, it's definitely got better pattern. It's very restful. If you look at Atom Pub, the spec, how they work, it's, 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 it's very nice in terms of rest, but it's still pulling. You're still saying, here's my feed, get my feed, look at my feed. Okay, fine. Get my feed, look at my feed. So new messages, you have to go and ask them, when do they arrive? This is a really bad way of making any kind of system. So systems should be asynchronous. You should be event-driven. That means that, oh, it arrived. Thanks. And most of the time, you're waiting on stuff. So you say, I wait. When it arrives, I continue. What we do in REST MS is we have what's called a long poll. A long poll says, get a message. It's not there yet. When it arrives, I get it. So the get the get action, the get method, actually can be an asynchronous get. It's kind of weird. The URI exists before the object exists. And it works very nicely. So you're, you can have queues which are sitting on the server, waiting for you, private queues. And then, when you're at your leisure, you collect your messages. It's really like a mailbox, a little bit like email. But much simpler than email, much, much simpler. Addressing. So again, protocols like AtomPub are very nice, but there's no abstraction, there's no addressing. You publish to a feed, you read from a feed. Well, it's better than publishing to a directly point to point, but it's still very tightly coupled. With RESTMS, you can say, look, I have a pipe, and my pipe collects data from these and these and these feeds with these conditions, clack, 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 clack. I get my stuff in my pipe, and I read it when I want. So the pipe is actually doing a little bit like searching on feeds of data in real time. And whatever it's matching, it picks up and puts aside, and then you can pick up in your application. 
So you can imagine new ways of doing information processing. Let's say you want to monitor IRC channels on Freenet, which is, by the way, not allowed. I tried it, and they're like, you can't do that. Okay, fine, whatever. And you want to see when they mention your product or your name. You know, you have all these